Robin is Damian Wayne, and after a series of events, he was left not wanting to be Robin or follow in his father Batman's footsteps. This has led him on his own adventures, which has him discovering the secrets of Lazarus Island. This is Comic Storian, and I read you audio dramas of your favorite comic books. I cut down on the panels and B-plots to give you the core of the storyline. While we do avoid copyright problems, this also allows you to go to your local comic book store and buy the comic books for yourselves, where you can get more amazing art and add it to your collection. I do recommend using a sponsor that we have here, Shortbox, an app that will help you start your own comic book collection today. Click the link down below to be entered into a contest to start your collection. Today we're going to be covering Robin issues 1 through 12 from 2021. Basically, this is the lead into Shadow War, which is the lead into Dark Crisis, but it's its own contained storyline showing us Damian Wayne on an adventure of self discovery. And I personally enjoyed it. Here we go. In the dead of night, in the rogue nation of Markovia, armed security on top of a building are knocked out within seconds. Inside, Talia Al Ghul pours herself a cup of tea when she suddenly notices something. She tells the intruder that when they were six years old, they snuck up on a member of the League of Assassins and cut off his ear just to prove that he would never hear them coming. She sensed them because they wanted her to. After a few moments of silence, Talia sighs, stating that they are just as theatrical as their father. The voice tells her, I am nothing like my father. My father was a failure, a boy trapped in an alley. I am free. Damien steps out of the shadows. I have come to take my role as the grandson of the immortal Ra's al Ghul, heir to the demon throne. Talia hugs him, telling him that it's good to see him. Though she respected his desire to explore his birthright to the bat, she is disappointed. Her son finally returns defeated. Damien tells her, I have not come because of defeat. I reject the bat. Talia asks, what does he have to show for it? He has no resources, no money, no home, no father, Alfred or the rest of the family to go to. Even those teenagers that he worked with are out of his reach. He claims to be free, yet he ran to his mother. How uninspired. Like a baby bird who tried to fly on his own too early, he went crashing down to earth. However, she is here to pick him up and return him to the nest. But first, are these assassins with him? A group of hooded men surrounded the two of them, and Damien says, I just assumed that they were more of your guards. One of the men states, Greetings, Talia, daughter of the demon. It is time to prove yourself to the League of Lazarus. You will be tested. Another assassin swings at Damien, but as he dodges, he asks, The League of what? Talia grabs her cup, throwing it at one of the assassin's faces, stating that she can tell him a bedtime story after they kill them all. The two begin to take out the assassins one after another, but as Damien focuses on his opponent, one of the assassins grabs Talia, holding a knife to her throat, telling her, Your training will not be enough to stop me from drawing demon blood. Talia calmly stands in the man's grip, telling Damien to go ahead and kill him. What is he waiting for? And then Damien stares as... Sploosh. The next of the backup stories continues in Detective Comics 1034. Damien stares down at a pool of blood as his sword drips, and he adds to it as his mother says that he hesitated. His father's influence still poisons his actions. As she holds up the bloody knife used to kill her attacker, Damien says that he knew that she could take care of herself. He was distracted by their tattoos. It's writing, it's no language that he's ever seen. Their fighting style reminds him of the League of Shadows and Assassins, but different. And they called themselves the League of Lazarus. Talia sighs, telling him long ago, the Demon's Head Empire had three classes, the League of Assassins, the League of Shadows, and the League of Lazarus. But the League of Lazarus rebelled early in her father's reign. This little visit was intended to send her a message. She has no interest in the League of Lazarus or their tournament. Damien says that even if he hadn't studied every detail of their family and empire in their archives, he's had access to the Bat family's computer files for years. There is little that he does not know of this world. How was this kept from him? Why was the League of Lazarus kept from him? Talia begins to walk off telling him that it doesn't matter. Come. Damien looks around telling her that this is a case. Wait, what? What tournament? 
As the two reach the helipad, Talia says that Leviathan was stolen from her. Her family has lost control over the League of Shadows and the League of Assassins. Her father has fallen from grace. There are much larger things going on in the world that now requires her attention. It falls on her to rebuild their empire. That is her priority. And so it will be his as well. He will assist her, and she will not treat him as her son. That was her mistake in the past. He will be treated as any other assassin in her employ. A weapon in her hands. If he does that, he may live to the expectations that she has for him. It is time for him to choose which life he wishes to lead. That of the demon, or that of the detective. Damien looks out the window of the helicopter as Talia goes on stating that he said that he left behind Batman's ways. Prove it. He'll be better off. Mother knows best. Talia looks back. She sees Damien has jumped out of the helicopter, telling her that she should have known better than to cage him. Do not let me down, my baby bird. My son. Damien lays on a slab, the wound in his chest quickly healing. As it heals up, he sits up in shock. I'm embarrassed for you. Ravager calls from the doorway, and Damien looks at her in shock. You wouldn't have died if you had just listened to me. Come on, let me give you a tour. She says to him, motioning for him to follow her out the door. As they walk down the beach, Damien realizes that no one can die on Lazarus Island. Ravager nods as she explains that it helps with the death tournament and allows people to show off their skills. Damien turns to see Flatline standing nearby. Don't go falling in love with the first girl who kills you, Pipsqueak. Ravager reminds her young friend. Love is for fools. I want a rematch. Damien grumbles quietly, but Ravager explains that Damien really wants to know the rules, which Mother Soul explained after he had his heart ripped out by Flatline. Mother Soul gathered all of the fighters and explained the rules. No matter how horrific the death, you will be resurrected, but you get three deaths and only three deaths. After each of you have died, the true tournament begins. Consider your first death a sparring match. If you wish to leave after your second death, no one will judge you. But if you die three times, your soul will leave you forever. Combat must only occur when the sun shines on Lazarus Island. The last survivor will become a legend and be awarded the greatest prize, immortality. Damien stops and turns to Ravager, a strange look appearing on his face. You're saying I don't have to hold back? He questions, and he suddenly moves fast, sharp batterings in his hands as he leaps through the air. Game on! He shouts. The first two go quickly, with Damien kicking them apart, throwing knives into their throats. He keeps moving, with one of the fighters trying to run, but Damien lands on his head, driving his face into the ground with a sickening crunch. Battering stabbing into a pair of the twins' foreheads, dropping them instantly, and as another tries to fight back, Damien flips and twists around him, reaching down, grabbing a hold of a katana. The others charge at him, trying to team up to stop his slaughter, but the blade flashes through the air, cutting them apart. Finally. Damien stops. He's barely breathing heavy as he looks at the carnage that he has created. I always feel better after a warm-up. He nods, tossing the sword at the ground by Flatline, staring at her, making the motion that he is waiting for her. She smiles, winking at him. Ravager shakes her head as she comes over, picking up the sword. Okay, bird boy, you proved your point. Everyone here knows that you're a real killer. You did it. Bravo. She explains that he'll need more than that to live here, though, and begins to point out his top five threats on the island. Respawn, a new fighter, chaotic and undisciplined. Dress like, you know, she says, pointing at the young fighter that dresses like Deathstroke. Double XL, 10 years old, his ego makes you look humble. Comes with an entourage that pumps him up. They're insufferable. She explains that she points at the young kid that is punching someone into the sand. Flatline, Lord Deathman's new sidekick you've already met. Black Swan, former ballerina who now sees the art of killing as a dance. And finally, she points to Damien's biggest challenge on the island. Hawk. The League of Shadows brought him. They watch as Hawk defeats his opponent. He stops short of killing him, bringing shouts of protest from the League of Shadows members, and with a sigh, the young man breaks his opponent's neck. Damien scoffs as he heads off to find his stuff. His duffel bag is waiting where he left it. Begins to look inside to make sure that nothing is stolen, and Ravager takes out a manga that Damien had been reading. Wow, I always took you for an art of war kind of kid, she jokes before he can snatch the manga back from her. It's personal, he snaps at her before demanding to know why she's on the island. Oh, I'm not here for the tournament. Living forever seemed boring to me. I have other interests, she vaguely explains. She smiles, telling him that she can help him out, train him. He looks at her for a moment before turning away. No thanks, son of Batman, remember? 
He calls over his shoulder. And that night, Damien slips over the walls into the heart of the island where he follows two of Mother Soul's men as they make their way through the city streets. And he suddenly pauses. You really think that you could sneak up on me? He asks as he looks over his shoulder to see Flatline who just smiles. I'll put my knives away if you do. What do you want? He growls at her and she begins to follow him explaining that she felt that they should update their relationship from enemies to frenemies. They continue to follow the thugs, watching as they open up a secret passageway, and Damien and Flatline continue to follow them inside of the secret chamber. This is my first secret passage, Flatline says with glee. Just keep quiet, Damien hisses at her. Inside, they find a chamber dominated by a huge Lazarus pit, the statue of a demon lord watching over it. Mother Soul stands with her men as they explain that the pit is too unstable. This is the biggest Lazarus pit that I've ever seen. Is this why Mother kept the League of Lazarus hidden from me? Damien questions, and Mother Soul continues to look into the glowing green liquid, assuring the priests that they will have everything that they'll need soon. Weird. Are they doing experiments on it? Flatline asks, and then she turns to where Damien was to find the young man is now gone. Like father, like son. Cute. Flatline says with a smile. Damien heads back towards the barracks, and the voice of the dead Alfred fills his head, warning him to seek aid in solving this case. Mid-leap, Damien is suddenly captured by a net falling to the ground, and he quickly cuts his way free, standing to meet his attacker. All I was saying is you're still too cocky to win this tournament, shorty. If you want to win, you're going to need my help. Period. Ravager states as she steps out of the shadows. She explains that Damien thinks that no one would dare get the drop on him, and that he takes himself too seriously. She begins to lead him across the island, finally stepping on the beach to the site in the sounds of fighters relaxing and having a good time. I know you've been trained to be the best of the best, but that's not enough. Not here. I need to teach you something that Batman was incapable of teaching you. How to have fun! The beach party falls quiet as Damien walks up to the pavilion and XXL asks how she brought in the narc. Damien scoffs. How many times does someone need to die? Three? Ravager grabs him, telling him to heal, and as she drags him along, Damien asks, Is this what you wanted to train me in? The art of embarrassment? She tells him no. Today's lesson is all about how to have fun. Now, she always hated homework, so today they're going to study in the field. His assignment for the evening is to make a friend. Damien scoffs again. I've had friends. They've either all left me or grew up too fast. Ravager tells him that the Teen Titans were not his friends. Those were people he kidnapped and then bossed around. This is about getting out of your comfort zone. Here you can watch what people do to unwind, to relax. Even fighters in a death tournament know that they need to chill out at the end of a long day of trying to kill each other. Damien asks, Will that help me win the League of Lazarus tournament? How? Explain it to me, Ravager. She tells him to distrust her on this. Sometimes fighting means being quick on your feet, and a good fighter knows how to loosen up. When I caught you with that manga, you went stiff. Flatline then yells, You read manga too? Is that why you ditched me? Because I know you're not coming here. You'd never be caught dead at the party. Damien glares and Flatline tells him to relax. It was a joke. Ravager shrugs, telling her that Damien doesn't understand jokes. As the two begin to walk, Damien sees one of the other contestants taking out a knife and stabbing it back and forth between his fingers. So Damien walks up and takes the knife, throwing it into the air, slamming his hand down. As the knife comes back down, Ravager asks, what are you? But Damien looks back and winks. It lands between his fingers and everyone stops to look, all cheering in amazement. After that, Damien hops up on the table while everyone tells him how awesome that was. And he laughs. If you guys think that was cool, I did way more hardcore things than that. One time, just then a man named Draken walks up stating, you want to hear hardcore? Me and the kid's old man used to go toe to toe. I was there to kill some mayor or senator. Kind of forgot. Just then I thought I had to drop on Batman and pow, the old man was pissed, shattered my jaw. Damien begins to state, that really isn't, but another contestant chimes in, no way. My story is way better. This one time? But as everyone then starts to share their stories about being beat up by Batman, Damien sighs, walking off on his own. After a bit of walking, he walks up to the side of the mountain and when he hears a voice telling him that they used to sacrifice people here, he can feel it too, right? Whoever lived on this island before Mother Soul and the League of Lazarus, they used this location for ritual sacrifices to their gods. It's not just the everlasting smell of blood, it's sad how the feeling of death lingers around. 
Damien assumes his fighting stance, telling Hawk that Ravager believes that he is to be the greatest challenger here. Rules of the tournament state that they can't fight at night, but if he wants to break that rule, Hawk looks back, telling him that he's only trying to find a quiet spot to meditate. But he heard the sounds on the beach, and he didn't recognize them. He's never really been one to socialize. Damien then says that he studied with the League of Shadows before, and he was never with them. So why is he with them now? Hawk looks over the ledge, stating that they found him when no one else could, or would. They helped him, retrained him, and they gave him a purpose. Damien says that he knows what their training is like, and he can't trust them. And Hawk tells him that they might have more in common than he thinks. My father was a hero too, just like yours. After a few begrudging moments, the two sit and they share their stories about their fathers. How both were always riding around in themed cars, both have a cave, and they always seem to put children in danger. Though Damien's father has a thing for leather, and Hawks is more into fishnets. Damien says, yeah, my father's into whips and leather, lots of leather. <laughs> The two find themselves laughing hysterically, but then a voice calls out to Hawk that he must stay away from the demon. Damien is their enemy. He's with the League of Shadows, and it is in his best interest to avoid the fallen sun. Damien looks back at the hooded man, telling him, I know you, your master Dusk. Nothing was ever good enough for you. Everything being way advanced or much younger than the rest. My mother banished you for throwing her son to the wolves, literally. Dusk says that he could have been their greatest weapon, but instead he's their greatest failure. Cocky and too headstrong for his own good. Too much like his mother and father. They won't make the same mistake again. Hawk, prove your loyalty to the shadows. Hawk begins to take off his coat, telling him that he's sorry, and Damien readies himself, telling him, Is this the best you have to offer? The League of Shadows has truly fallen from grace! For a moment, Damien begins to gain the upper hand, his kicks and punches finding their marks. But just as he dodges a sweeping kick, Hawk grabs him by the cape, slamming him into the ground, and the power is exchanged. Hawk lifts Damien's body up, and Dusk tells him that he will only heal if he dies, but he will live to survive this and live in pain. And Damien is thrown from the mountain towards the rocky waters below. Just before he lands head first, someone grabs him, telling him, I have you, son. Damien wakes up the next morning. He groans. You found me, father? A voice tells him, close. We are finally reunited. I have much to teach you. As Damien opens up his eyes, he can see his grandfather, Raz al Ghul, standing over him. As light comes through into the makeshift tent, Damien groans as he feels something wet slapping across his face. He wakes up, seeing Goliath licking him. Is that you? As he jumps up, his wounds ache and he recoils a bit, remembering his fight with Hawk. And after getting dressed, he leaves the tent to find out where he's been taken. But that's when he sees the man who brought him here, Raz al Ghul. Damien shouts, I knew it! You're working with the League of Lazarus and the League of Shadows. You took me from the tournament to prevent me from winning. Raz says that he may be keeping an eye on the League of Lazarus, but he has nothing to do with them, not anymore. They were a mistake. He informs Damien that it's best to be left alone, and he means it. No good can come from Damien being in that tournament. Damien charges in asking, who are you to give me any kind of life advice? And then there's a sudden crack in his chest as Damien stops. Roz tells him, if I was healthy, I'd have no issues winning. Now there are crops that I must tend to, Damien. When things have settled, we can continue our conversation, but do know this. History will reveal itself when it is ready to be seen, and until then you will find nothing but misery. Back on Lazarus Island, Ravager continues searching for Damien, but with everyone not giving her any answer, she decides that it's time to call them. She ducks away into a temple to make her call when suddenly she hears something in a voice telling her that any communication with the outside world is against the rules. She looks up to see Respawn about to kill one of the other contestants, stating, Don't worry about this, just getting a little revenge from earlier, as well as moving the tournament along. Speaking of which, where is the little bird? Maybe he ran home to daddy? Ravager pauses for a moment, asking, Who are you? Your voice sounds familiar, what are you doing in the tournament? Respawn tells her that he is here for the same reason that she is, to prove something. She scoffs, stating that she has nothing to prove. She's looking for someone and is starting to think that she's found them. And until everyone dies once, the tournament doesn't. But with Ravager's back turned, Respawn takes his blade stabbing into her. And as she falls, Mother Soul tells the others to make sure the girl is resurrected tonight. The tournament begins at dawn. 
Over on the other island, Damien tries to hotwire Roz's land cruiser, but with not getting very far, he smacks it, yelling that this thing is a piece of garbage. Roz jingles the keys, telling him, it'll be easier with these, but I highly recommend you not do this and allow yourself to heal. Damien jumps down, shouting, I don't have time to heal. Didn't your father teach you that there is so much more to fighting than the physical? If you wish to win this tournament, you must be training your mind. You focus too much on what the others think of you. Tune out the deafening noise. You must think more than the present. Not just your next move, but your opponent's next move. Learn patience, not to strike at every opportunity, but the right once. As the night falls after a day of training, Damien asks, Why are you here? Roz laughs, telling him that his father and the outsiders beat him. Sometimes to win. You must lose, but come, I'll show you why. As Roz points up, Damien says that he doesn't see anything, and Roz tells him, the stars. Every year, humanity steals more and more stars from us. Toxic smog, trash, debris that obscures the origin of life itself. Society literally is blind to the truth of their existence. But when I come here, I can still see them. It reminds me why I do what I do. Why I fought to save the world so many times. I learned from the Earth's greatest minds for hundreds of years, but my life's actions in the past had purpose. A purpose that I do not take lightly. And when I look at you, grandson, I see so much turmoil. Your heart is full of rage, too much for a child so young. I feel like the world is mine to protect, and I will not find peace until I have done so. That is my birthright and my burden. I will forever be my greatest enemy. The battle that you feel within is the most important one for your life. As Roz turns back, he doesn't see Damien, but then he notices his keys are missing. Goliath whimpers, and Roz pats him on the back, telling him, Don't worry. My grandson is a demon and a detective, and greater than both. After making his way back to Corta Maltese, where he was originally taken to Lazarus Island, Damien notices a deal between the League of Lazarus and the League of Assassins. A League Assassin asks, has Mother Soul chosen to live up to her end of the deal? The Lazarus Assassins tell her that they have the resin, but where is the book? As an old tome is present, the League Assassins state that the League of Assassins appreciates Mother Soul's respect for history. Damien begins to wonder what could be in that book that is worth giving up the key to immortality. But before he could act, he notices something. A group of people asking, how did they miss him? Ravager's communication said. Damien turns around, I knew I couldn't trust her. What do you want? As Nightwing and the rest of the Bat family catch up, they tell him, it's time to come home, Damien. He takes off with Nightwing yelling, Ravager contacted Jason, telling him that you might be in trouble. We're here to help. Just stop and talk to us, Damien. Jason then says, Ravager said you're mixed up in some kind of death tournament? And Damien tells them, it's the League of Lazarus tournament, the best fighters in the world. It's a case that I was investigating. But yeah, I'll make it interesting. If you can catch me, I'll go back to Gotham. As Damien sprints ahead, Nightwing tells everyone to remember, don't hurt him. Each family member then takes their turn catching up to Damien, but each time they think they have him, he manages to slip through their grasp and pick up his lead. After cutting Nightwing's line, several red batarangs are thrown and Damien nimbly dodges them asking, You too! Red Hood holds out his gun telling him, Those were warning shots! Don't make me use the trank! Damien walks forward telling him, You act so cool because you're the Robin who died, but who hasn't died? I'd like to help you, but I left my crowbar in my other cape. Making me angry isn't going to work, Damien. No, it won't. See, I've been watching all of you. Grayson is the most experienced. Tim is the smartest. Spoiler's the bravest. But you, you're the most emotional. Damien hugs Red Hood and then shocks him. Sorry. It had to be done. Damien runs ahead to board the boat back to the island when suddenly Nightwing stops him. Happy birthday. He tosses Damien a present, but Damien tells him, you're a few days late. And Nightwing tells him, just open it. Damien opens up the box, pulling out a metal bar with the words versus the world on it, asking, what is this? Nightwing tells him that when he was leaving for college, Alfred told him that he could take on the world. And that is the trapeze bar from his family's act. Alfred got it and painted it black for him. It helped him remember that he came from two worlds, and it looks like Damien could use it more right now. Alfred knew that he struggled with his past, present, and future, and any time that he needed reminding of who he was, 
he would think of that gift. Damien pauses for a moment, taking off his mask. I was there. I saw. Death has always been a part of my life since the day I was born. But with Alfred, I didn't get it until I heard his neck snap. Nightwing steps forward, telling him that he's sorry that he wasn't there when it happened. There were so many times that he'd run away from home, run from Bruce and Alfred. And for a long time, he was Batman's sidekick, or the leader of the Titans. It took a bit for him to figure out who he was away from all of that. And Damien asks, Why are you saying all of this? Nightwing tells him, It's because Tim, Steph, Jason, they were all Robins to Bruce first. But you... You're his first Robin. As Nightwing places his hand on Damien's shoulder, Damien tells him, You caught me. And Nightwing asks, Did I? No. Stop. I'll catch you. Please don't go. What are you doing? Nightwing winks. Please don't. Run. Damien smiles, leaping over the ledge, and as the others catch up, they all ask, Did we really not catch him? Later back at Lazarus Island, the arena is lit up as everyone makes their way in and Ravager runs up to Hawk shouting, What did you do to Robin? But before Ravager could do anything, Damien walks in. I didn't know you cared, but don't worry, I'm here. Where have you been? Training. I was missing something, but I think I've got it. As for Flatline and Hawk, they got lucky. Next time, I'm gonna cut off their heads. He then looks at Ravager. Once this is all done, we're gonna be talking about you ratting me out. But before Ravager could respond, Mother Soul announces that it is time. Ages ago, her people were lost to the desert sands. They honor them with this tournament. Damien whispers to Ravager, asking, Did you see the book? She sent her men to exchange chemicals in the Lazarus pits with the League of Assassins for that book. Mother Soul goes on stating that the demon that they worshipped was also lost. And now he witnesses their souls given up to him as a sacrifice. Flatline stops them. Uh, sorry, what's this about a demon? And Mother Soul holds out her arms, telling everyone, It is time! Fight! After the reunion in Gotham with his brothers and sisters of the Bat family, Damien is called back to Lazarus Island to begin the death tournament set up by the League of Lazarus and its leader, Mother Soul. Round one was Damien versus Blue Shrike. But while Blue Shrike speaks about how Nightwing embarrassed his brother and how he is fighting for his brother's honor, Damien shrugs it off, telling him, Whatever. Shut up and fight. Each section of the arena is broken up, and each pair begins their fights to the death. But while everyone is working through their first fights, Damien has already defeated Blue Shrike and is working on his second individual. His next opponent is Tengu, who's already eyeing to kill Damien after taking his sword. But after the first fight, the second is over just as quickly as Tengu charges at Damien and Damien kicks the sword from Tengu's hand. The sword flips backwards, driving itself into Tengu's neck. But before Damien can even wipe the blood off of his face, Mother Soul tells him that he must be patient. The other fighters are still in their first battles. While he has completed rounds one and two, he should be taking his time and enjoying the carnage. Everyone else is. Damien walks off telling her that she may think that she can play him, but he knows something is up with her, her, and her book. But with nothing else going on now that he's defeated his first two, he sits back to watch the remaining fights before moving on to his third, and he sees Flatline. She does her signature heart rip out move, the one that killed Damien on his introduction fight to the island, and he scoffs, commenting that it's her only move, but then again, he fell for it as well. After their match, Flatline sits beside Damien, asking if he's been sitting here for a while. He missed some pretty good fights. Drenched, electrocuted Dracon. XXL stomped out Raptor. Ravager choked out that pro wrestler with his own fanny pack. Johnny Fist tried to take on Hawk, but, well, it didn't work out. Flatline then points over to Respawn and Jiro, asking what does he think about those two. Damien says that if he were Jiro, he would take those knives from Respawn and gut him with them. Flatline tells him no. Her plan would be to let him keep his toy. His knives are a crutch. He uses them to fight from a distance, which means he's not confident on his inside game. Damien laughs. laughs. You're right. Flatline reaches into her jacket, pulling out a small book, telling him, Oh yeah, and this is for you. He takes the book, looking at it, asking how did she... But Flatline tells him that XXL tried to steal it when he disappeared. It's a nice little romance about art school, but also about being competitive. Lord Deathman is super weird about manga and wouldn't let her read any. Lord Deathman can be a strict instructor, but he's gotten better recently, less crazed. Sometimes it's like she's the one training him. 
Damien hears Alfred whisper that he likes this one, and Damien shrugs it off stating that he needs to heal up a bit before his next match. Flatline tags along, but Ravager and Hawk also follow him, asking if they're done with their makeout session under the bleachers yet. They would like to compare notes about what Mother Soul and this tournament are all about. Damien yells, why should he be helping her? She ratted him out to the others and brought the guy who tried to kill him. Flatline separates everyone. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's a lot going on here right now. Like, a running theme, yeah? Just then, Hawk grabs Damien, pulling him down as the sickle comes crashing through, nearly stabbing him in the back. Respawn walks in. Well, 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 well. Are we all making friends now? Maybe flirting? Damien asks what does he want, and Respawn asks him, Do any of you think you have a shot at winning? All of you are going to stop when you die twice, afraid of that third death. Not me, though. Each of you act as if you have some reason to be here, eternal life or something to prove, but the truth is the four of you are not avatars of death. You are life's rejects. Mother Soul announces round three is about to begin, and Damien finds himself against none other than Respawn. Everyone fights side by side, with Damien jumping away to gain some ground, but Respawn throws his sickle, throwing Damien up into the stands besides Mother Soul. He quickly runs off with Respawn following him, telling him, I fought enough battles to know when someone's letting me win, but why? Off in the distance, away from Respawn, Damien reads through the book of Lazarus that Mother Soul had next to her, asking what is she planning? What's hidden in the Lazarus pits beneath this island? Wait. This would mean that Mother Soul is. But before he could utter the words, Respawn's sickle comes flying towards his back. There's a sudden pain as Damien shouts when Respawn's sickle lands in his shoulder and Damien is ripped back. Respawn collects the chain to his sickle as he walks up telling him, this is why you lose. Damien grabs a hold of the chain, pulling, causing Respawn to fall forward. And then he delivers a swift kick to the chin with a loud crack. He gets back up telling him, Flatline was right. Your chain is your crutch. Respawn charges forward yelling, You'll pay for what you've done! But Damien catches him telling him, I don't even know you! But you know what? Let's correct that! He reaches down beginning to peel back Respawn's mask and he sees a scar on his chin and white hair before Respawn pulls the mask down yelling, No! No one can see my face! Not until... But as Respawn turns away, Damien kicks him over the ridge telling him, you should have worn a domino mask, rookie. Seconds later, there's a loud splat along the rocks below when a voice tells him that that was quite an interesting plot. Mother's soul walks out of the woods. You did all of that to trick Respawn into throwing you at me so that you could steal the Book of Lazarus. But if you want to be the crowned champion, you must return to the arena. Please. I've had the book long enough to know what this island really is and the truth of why you brought all of us fighters here and why you began this little death tournament. The Lazarus Pits leaked into the very foundation of this island itself, infecting it. And now it feeds off the fights. It needs the violence, but it's not enough. It wants deaths. It's powering the island. And that isn't all of it, isn't it? I know who you really are. The history of the Lazarus League and the history of you. I didn't read it all, but I saw enough. Your name is Ra Al Ghul, soul of the demon. You're Ra's Al Ghul's mother. But you died long before Ra's discovered the Lazarus Pits. Mother Soul looks down at her great great grandson. Our family has a history of not staying dead, young demon. You're right. The island needs more death. Damien asks what happens to the winner then. Was that a lie? She tells him that the promise of eternal life is true. For what though? To be your servant of Armageddon? I won't let it happen. I'll stop it before. Damien hurries off to the arena where Black Swan, XXL, and Drenched have all died their second time and are leaving. Ravager's trying to catch her breath as she says, Junior Bird, Black Swan put up quite a fight. Damien tells her that they don't have time for this. They need to get off of the island, but Ravager walks past him. Not a chance. Not until I learn the truth about who Respawn is. But before she could leave, Hawk lunges in, plunging Ravager in the back, shouting, The tournament must end! And will only once a victor is crowned. Damien gets ready to stop the two from fighting, but that's when Flatline walks in, stating that since the two of them have already paired up. May I have this dance, Damien? Respawn bursts in, shouting that he wants his rematch, but Mother Soul stops him, stating he must wait his turn. Damien tells Flatline that she doesn't want this fight, and Flatline laughs, asking, Did you already forget that I killed you last time, Damien? Flatline jumps in, swinging, but Damien dodges each hit, stating, 
I can win the whole tournament. You need to stop. She manages to get a hit in asking what makes him so special. If he's really as good as he says, he'll respect her and not hold back and beat her. Damien wipes the blood from his nose. Fine. And he begins to punch it back. Flatline catches a swing, breaking Damien's arm, stating that she'll thank Respawn for warming him up. And she's sorry about this. She pulls her arm back, getting ready to rip his heart out a second time. But that's when he grabs her wrist, stopping her. I'll hang on to my heart this time. Thanks. And he throws her back into a stone wall. He sees Flatline not moving as he walks up and he asks her if she's bleeding. She grabs the stone spike in her stomach, telling him, ah, just a scratch, come on. You know this isn't my first time. And with that, she falls over dead. The ghost of Alfred Pennyworth places his hand on Damien's shoulder. And as Damien checks Flatline's pulse, Mother Soul tells him that she warned him not to make friends on the island, that it's dangerous. Damien coldly tells her that all of this killing is wrong. And Mother Soul tells him, wrong. I know. Isn't it funny that it's always the killers who learn that lesson? Damien then feels her pulse, and he stands up stating that he's going to put a stop to this tournament and her. Whatever she is creating will be ended, and then he will be coming for her. He laughs, telling him that he has much greater concerns at the moment as there are now only two remaining. The last fight is beginning now. Mother Soul points over to where Ravager was fighting, and Damien sees Hawk standing over her, stating, You should have stayed away. Last time I let you live. But now... And with that, it has finally come down to this, the final showdown of the Lazarus Tournament. Robin versus Hawk, Damien versus Connor. The other contestants begin to gather and watch as the two stare each other down, neither making a single move. Then finally, they rush at each other, each swing missing its mark until they both land one at the same time. They push each other back, the crowd watching quietly, and then they slowly begin to clap. People are cheering for Damien and Hawk. Some for Damien, some for Hawk. Either way, they want someone to die. In a flash, Hawk manages to grab a hold of Damien, throwing him into the crowd. Flatline tells him that he better move if he wants to stay alive. And then using the crowd as leverage, Damien jumps high into the air, delivering a devastating kick to Hawk's head, launching him across the arena. Now the two of them begin to land their blows back and forth, and as Damien goes in to end it, Hawk is one step ahead of him, hitting him with an elbow in the eye. Damien reaches for his face. Ah, am I not going to win? No, I will end this! Hawk kicks Damien in the stomach, following up with a bone-rattling punch to the face. Ravager calls out that the fight is over. This has to stop, but Damien tells her, Stay out of this! I'm not finished yet! Damien throws himself back into the battle, with Hawk telling him that they can end this, that it will only be his second to death. You can stop, Damien! There's no need to continue this abuse! Damien spits blood from his mouth. I've been taking abuse my whole life. Why stop now? I failed someone who meant a lot to me, because I wasn't good enough. This island is my punishment. I'm here to find out if I'm really the monster that people keep telling me that I am. And I'll never stop until I know if the darkness that I feel inside is real. Damien continues to swing with Hawk catching a punch, telling him, If you won't stop, then it's time I ended the fight. And with a quick twist of his wrist, Hawk grabs a hold of Damien's head, and we hear a sudden crack as Damien's body falls lifeless to the ground. Mother Soul asks if anyone else wishes to challenge Hawk. They all have their third lives to use. But after witnessing Hawk's skills and his ability to kill Damien so easily, everyone turns it down. She then looks over at Master Dusk, telling him that he was right. Their champion is just what they needed. Dusk says that he would like to propose an alliance between the two leagues, the Lazarus and the Shadows united. Prove Raz al Ghul was wrong to bury the truth about the demon. As the two shake hands, Hawk calls out asking if they can get this over with already, and Mother Soul tells him, As you wish. Open the pit! Suddenly, there's a rumble that shakes the entire island to its core. As the arena begins to split open and a green light begins to shine through it. Some of the people begin to try and get off of the island, but Flatline looks down at the docks at their boats, stating that they're on fire. Just then, the League of Shadows begins to surround everyone and Ravager asks what the hell is going on. The tournament is over. Mother Soul walks up telling everyone, none of you will be leaving this island. Ever. The destiny of this tournament and this island is to feed the pit the deaths that it needed to be fully charged, to unleash the demon that sleeps inside. 
Once the demon possesses the world's mightiest fighter, the Avatar will be given the immortality that they promised. It would be best if you did not resist. There's another voice that yells out over the crowd, stating, You are wrong! The tournament isn't over until I say it's over. Damien stands up with Ravager and the others telling him to stand down. He already has died twice. If he dies a third time, it's permanent. Damien laughs. I know, but I have the advantage. I'm fully healed now. Mother Soul rises. It's too late! The demon is upon us! A green hand reaches out of the pit, with Hawk asking, Don't you get it? That's why I joined the League of Shadows. This is what I've been training for. I have fought and trained specifically for what comes next. Only I can stop the demon Damien. And at that moment, the demon appears, stabbing its entire arm through Hawk's back with a loud shunk. With the demon finally coming to life, Mother Soul shouts that this started long before he was ever born. For centuries, I have watched as human society killed the earth, sky, and waters. Our home needed a true champion. I had hoped it'd be you, but Connor beats you, my great-great-grandson. Once my demon merges with Hawk's body, he will become indestructible. Your grandfather, my son, believed that merely cutting down the Earth's population would be enough to restore the world to its former self. But I knew that the whole world must burn first. Purge itself of the disease that is afflicting it. Damien jumps on punching the demon right in the face, asking, If I beat your demon, will you finally shut up? He jumps back, feeling his hand burning, asking how is he supposed to fight this thing if its skin burns everything that it touches? He then focuses his attacks with his legs, using the guarded parts to strike. But with a quick lunge, the demon grabs a hold of Damien's leg, slamming him into the ground. As the demon sprays its acid-like breath, it throws Damien across the arena and into the stone steps. Mother Soul then shouts to the demon to focus on Hawk, to kill anyone that stands in its way. Damien lays there, recovering from the acid-sprayed breath upon him. I failed. Again. The Lazarus demon is too strong. I couldn't beat it. I couldn't beat Hawk. I'm useless. But that's when a voice tells him, You can do this. Damien turns to see the spirit of Alfred again, the one that he sees and no one else sees. I'm sorry, but I can't. Alfred steps through the fire, asking, do you remember what your father's first steps in becoming Batman were? His parents' death. He made a vow to them. Then what? As if living through Bruce's history, Damien says that his father returned home and he had a plan. He thought that the skills that he had learned to fight Gotham's crime was enough, but Bruce was wrong. He came home hurt, unsure of his mission, and he felt that he had failed the vow that he had made to his parents, that he couldn't make Gotham's dark side fear him. And then a bat came to him. His father knew then what he needed, a symbol, a symbol to strike fear. Alfred says that the bat was merely the inspiration. It was not the first step. Damien asks, what are you prattling on about? What was his... The bell. He rang the bell. You came and you helped him. My father's first step in becoming Batman was asking for help. So Damien rings that mental bell. He picks himself up, taking the blood from his mouth and drawing war paint on himself. He stands over the burning debris, circling his eyes red and drawing an R on his chest, telling everyone that they have died enough on this island. He has seen them all battle. He knows them to be great fighters. And they have all come here to prove something to themselves, but they were tricked by Mother Soul. They can stop her and her demon. They have all fought each other, but now he asks them to fight together. Mother Soul is right. He can't win without their help. They can stop her and her demon. They have all fought each other, but now he asks for them to fight together. Mother Soul was right. He can't win. Not without their help. So what do they say? Shall they all get the hell off this island? Or what? With all the contestants rallying behind him, Damien gives orders, splitting up the group to let those who have died twice focus on the priests while he and the others focus on the demon. Before running into battle, Damien looks back telling Alfred, Thank you. Thank you. And with no answer, Damien stops and smiles. Now with the extra help, Damien tells the others to take turns striking as to not injure themselves from the acid. After several hits and withdrawals, Respawn wraps his chains around the demon's neck, asking, 
Are my chains supposed to burn? I can't really do this alone. But Damien grabs onto the slack. We can do it. Its head is its weakness. And Flatline grabs on, telling him. So then, we take the head. Ravager picks it up, looking at both Flatline and Damien. Oh, stop flirting already and pull! As everyone begins to tug, Damien yells, We do it together! And with one final pull, there's a loud splack as the demon's head pops off like it's candy, spraying green blood everywhere. Hawk begins to wake up after his death, asking what even happened, and Ravager tells him to take it easy. The demon just ripped a hole in him. Mother Soul screams, asking, Do you have any idea what you just did? Our world needed a champion to burn away the disease, so it could be healed and start again. What do you have to say for yourselves? Damien pulls up his fist, scoffing and Mother Soul's anger rises. It's time that I taught the youngest demon a lesson! As Mother Soul breathes green fire all over Damien, he suddenly finds himself being transported somewhere out into the desert. He sees a small village off in the distance, and then a voice asks him, Excuse me, young man. I am to be the Sultan's physician. This is my wife, Sora, and my mother, Soul. Can you direct me to where I can rest my horse and find water? Damien stares at the young man, realizing that he has been flung through time. Raz al Ghul? After seemingly having been taken to the past, before Raz became the man that he is in the current day, Damien sneaks into the village after grabbing some clothes to try and blend in and figure out how to get back home. But as he passes by a strange altar, he sees a mother's soul, and she tells him to come and sit with her, pray to the demon with her. Damien walks over, knowing that this version of mother's soul doesn't know what he's going to do in the future. And he looks at the demon, asking, wasn't that the statue that they found in Bisu? Mother soul says that he knows his history, and Damien says that he learned it from his mother. Mother soul smiles, telling him that nothing beats a mother's love. Her son is the Sultan's physician. It gives her access to things that she shouldn't be able to. Knowledge of the demon and its place in the world. It is forbidden for her to read and write, but she trusts that he can keep their little secret. As Mother Soul holds a book, Damien asks if it's hers. Did she write it? And Mother Soul tells him that even before they arrived in the city, she has been plagued with visions. She begins to cough and continues telling her, that she's also gained a horrible sickness. But she knows that the demon will save her. Her visions told her so. Roz walks up and tells her praying to false idols is worthless. Science is the only truth. She has lost sight of that. The sickness has weakened her mind. Mother Soul begins to cough again, stating, don't mind her son, he's a kind soul, but... And Roz rushes over trying to help her, insisting that she comes with him, that he can provide her with medicine. She looks up, telling him that the day that he was born, her brother looked at him and told her that Roz's destiny was to be mankind's savior or to destroy all that lives. As Mother Soul breathes her last breath, Roz al Ghul screams for her passing, and Damien reaches out a hand to comfort him. But at that moment, Mother Soul thrusts her arm out, grabbing him by the neck. Hello, my great grandson. The world suddenly stops, and Damien demands to know what is going on, and Mother Soul tells him that he is in desperate need of a lesson, young demon. Though we are traveling through the sands of time, in the time that you see before you, my son thought that my sickness clouded my mind, but instead it only opened my mind. Damien tries to fight back, but Mother Soul grabs him and holds him in place so that they can sink into the sands below, telling him, You've disappointed me when you rejected your heritage. But I felt it best for you to see that my son was as bright as the stars in the heaven, but he's also as stubborn as a bull. Not long after my death, he began to have visions of a demon. Roz denied that they haunted him and instead focused on his science. His obsession with cheating death inspired the creation of the Lazarus Pits. But it was that very creation that led to the death of his wife, Sora. He refused to let the earth consume her, and instead of finding fate, Raz al Ghul found anger. He destroyed every trace of the demon. The city, its people, the history, the teachings all burned. But my son knew that he had one last act to prove his faith in his science. 
he had to inflict the Lazarus upon himself, and that when he was reborn and became Raz al Ghul. He believed that he was mightier than any demon, so he chose a new name, the Demon's Head. With the success of the Lazarus Pit, he then placed the bones of his deceased mother, me, and just as he knew it would, it brought me back to life. Raz watched as I rose, healed. He brought me my robes and treated me with respect. But Mother Soul lashed out, killing the servants, and Raz told her to control herself. Mother Soul shouted at him that he didn't see what she saw, that she was right about all of it. In the pit itself lives a demon. It showed her a horrible future that will only worsen until they are free of the demon. Purge the planet and start again. The demon is the only way. It was at that moment that Roz's views changed and he knew that he had made a mistake. He had hoped that the Lazarus Pit would heal her mind and body, but also heal her faith in the demon. And yet, all this did was strengthen his mother's desires to raise the demon. Roz created the League of Shadows to aid him in his quest to save the world from this monster. And the League of Assassins would kill anyone who got in his way. He then assembled the League of Lazarus to search for the locations where the pits had been created. And when the demon led her to this island, she knew that she had found something greater. Over the years, her faith in the demon has grown and spread, and many of the members of her son's own empire sided with her. The League of Lazarus no longer answers to Ra's al Ghul. They followed Mother Soul's gospel and believe in the demon. After that, they went to war. Mother versus Son, League of Assassins and Shadows attacked the League of Lazarus. The victors would control the world's Lazarus pits, but they were only priests, so the war was short-lived. And the League of Lazarus was banished to this island by Raz al Ghul, except he could not bring himself to kill his own mother. So he betrayed himself in a different way. He used the demon's magic, the one and only time. He created a spell that would curse her, bound her to the island, and then left her with the book. She shouted that he would be back, and that him calling on the demon only proved her right. But with all the curses and the spells, there was a catch. She and the priests studied the spell. It took centuries but they found a way to manipulate it. She could never leave, but they could bring fighters to the island and hold a tournament every hundred years. Each time there was a winner, it would be fed to the Lazarus pits. Normally that would resurrect them, but because they were alive, the magic in the pit would consume the winner. Damien asks, why are you telling me your origin story? And Mother Soul tells him that her visions have passed to Roz, and that she believes that they may have been passed to him. Damien tells her that he doesn't have any powers, but Mother Soul grabs his head, telling him, It's not power, it is a gift! Damien begins to see the visions. The demons that both Mother Soul and Roz saw, telling him that he must learn, that no matter what path he chooses, the demon is a part of him. After a few moments, he says that if they are connected, in her memories, that means that he is inside her head, where he can do the most damage. Whereas Mother Soul was in control, Damien asserts himself, taking control of the mind space, overpowering Mother Soul's influence on his own until he pushes her out completely. Back in the current time, the modern time where Damien was sent back, Mother Soul opens up her eyes shouting, and Ravager helps Damien up, asking him what happened. He says that this is Ra's al Ghul's mother, and Flatline yells out, Whoa! Twist! Mother Soul continues to shout that the demon still lives in his blood, and Damien asks, What was the point of all of this? To prove it to Ra's al Ghul? Mother Soul yells that she would do anything for her son. Can he say the same for his mother or his father? She saw the truth. There are worse things coming to their world, and it needs to burn and be reborn. But then a voice shouts, That is enough of your lies! Ra's al Ghul charges in with his assassins. I should have killed you when I had a chance. It's time I corrected that mistake. As the dust settles around the arena, Damien stares as his grandfather Ra's al Ghul and Mother Soul begin their battle, and he asks Ra's, what is he doing here? Mother Soul lunges at Ra's, asking how dare he set foot on her island. Did her tournaments finally get his attention? 
But before Damien can even intervene, his mother Talia tells him that much has happened since they last saw each other. They need to talk. But it appears the family reunion has already begun. Roz raises his sword, shouting, I should have done this a long time ago and buried you in the sands forever. But before his blade could fall, Damien stands between him and Mother Soul, telling him to stop. There has already been enough killing here. Mother Soul has been defeated, and he wants answers from all of them. Roz stares for a moment, but lowers his sword. You are a brave little demon to stand up to me. Very well. I and my mother have much to speak of anyway. Talia then tells her shadows to gather the League of Assassins and the League of Lazarus. But Damien stops her. How did you find me, mother? She hands him a vial of glowing green liquid, telling him the Lazarus Resin. It has come to their attention that their little family recipe for immortality has been filtered out into the world, that it's even being used to create zombies over in Gotham City. But it could only have come from so many locations. And once the tournament is done, the island revealed itself to them. One of the shadows returns, stating that Master Dusk has fled, and Talia scoffs, telling them that the snake couldn't have slithered far. The nearest island is Corta Maltese. But before Talia could give the order to follow, Damien says that he will find him. He and his friends have some unfinished business with Master Dusk, and after that, they will all have a very long talk. Talia watches and quietly asks, Friends? So across the waters at Corta Maltese, the five of them walk through the streets as the island gets ready for its own sort of holiday. Damien says that they need to split up to cover more ground, and Flatline says that she'll go with him. Respawn walks off on his own, and Ravager tells the others to go on. She'll stick with him. As everyone breaks off, Ravager says that she understands why Hawk and Flatline are helping find Dusk. But what about him? Seems like he only joined to have a clean getaway from the island. Now if she was like him, she'd stab him in the back. But there are better ways to find out who he really is. Respawn turns asking, Do you really want to see who I am? Fine. He takes off the mask. Ravager stares. What? How? Who Who else knows? And Respawn puts on his mask, telling her, Just you. I've been alone for my whole life. Ravager then tells him that he isn't anymore. Come on. She's going to get him out of here before anyone else finds out who he really is. Back over on Lazarus Island, Talia tells the remaining contestants that there will be no League of Lazarus or Assassins. There will only be the Shadows. And each of them has a one-time offer to join them. If they leave now... The League of Shadows will consider them enemies. Sleep on it. But once she finishes the offer, she steps down into the lower levels of the islands, asking, how are things even going? Mother's soul screams, telling Roz that she wishes he was never born. And Roz looks over. Do you happen to have a muzzle? Roz continues to argue with her as she tries to turn Talia against Roz. But he tells her enough. Her ways are dated. They are not the way of the demon. She laughs, telling him that his very nature is to extend what should have died long ago. He is incapable of taking the steps needed to embrace true change. What could ever possibly change the great demon's head? Back over at Corta Maltese, Damien and Hawk sense a presence as they see Master Dusk by the docks getting ready to escape. Damien, Flatline, and Hawk begin to make short work of the remaining loyalist. And once that is all dealt with, Damien and Hawk leap into the air, delivering a dual kick to the head, knocking him out. Flatline says that it was easy enough to get Master Dusk. What do they do now? And Talia steps out of the shadows, stating that Dusk will be taken care of. He will never bother their family, or anyone else for that matter, ever again. And with that, against the wishes of Talia, Damien and Flatline decide to go and have one night of fun. They head off into the festivities, where Flatline is sitting with Damien, stating that Respawn and Ravager seem to have disappeared. Didn't even say goodbye. And Damien says that they're probably somewhere about to kill each other. Flatline asks Damien, what is the deal with his manga anyway? She found him with it all the way back at the beginning of this adventure, and always wondered why he had a manga. He says that he found it one day in the streets of Gotham, and he just enjoyed it. It was something for him. No one else had it, so he kept it secret. So often, everything he does is a part of some piece of cake. My mother, my father, even being Robin is a part of Batman. But the manga? It was mine. Does that make sense, Flatline? She smiles. Nika. My name is Nika. And you know we're tied, right? I killed you, you killed me. We need a tiebreaker. 
Damien says that he thinks they both know who would win. And Flatline leans in. Yeah, we do. As Damien and Flatline kiss, across the way, Roz smiles and Talia stares. Roz tells her, he really does take after his father, doesn't he? And Talia scoffs, walking away. The next morning, everyone says their goodbyes, and Flatline asks Damien what are his plans? Going to see his father? Damien tells her no, as he looks at the vial of Lazarus resin. A serum that will revive the dead. And as we've discovered in the Red Hood storyline, if an individual is given enough of it, they will fully revive from the dead and be fully human again. And Damien tells her that he has something he needs to do. At that moment, lightning strikes and the skies light up over the grave of Alfred Pennyworth. The skies are blue as the seagulls squawked and flew by, and Damien, as he sat by himself on a cliff reading his manga, smiles and tells the person, nice try. But Hawk walks up, telling him that he wasn't trying to sneak up on him this time. If anything, he thought he'd be gone. Damien says that he just wanted to make sure that everyone had gotten off of Lazarus Island safety. Speaking of, why are you still here? Hawk takes a seat, telling him that he'll remain here for a few more days before venturing out into the world. Any plans on how he's going to get back to Gotham? I have an idea, but it's really going to piss off my mother. Back in town, Talia rounds up the lingering remains of Dusk and his assassins, along with Mother Soul as she continuously screams that the demon will return. He will burn the world down. Talia says that she takes it that there is no useful information for Mother Soul about her role in the Lazarus resin trade. And Roz tells her that she is right. Nothing of value. The woman is just as delusional as when I left her here. Talia then says it doesn't matter. They need to refocus on rebuilding the family empire. Her, him, and her son. Roz asks her, doesn't Damien wish to return to Gotham? And Talia says that Damien's exposure to Mother Soul's magic. Well, due to that, she'd like to keep an eye on him. Soon the jet will be prepared to bring them all to Nepal. And once they're home, the three of them can have a long discussion about their family's history. But as Talia calls for her private jet, one of the shadows tells her, that it's been stolen. Talia is stunned, demanding to know who would take Lazarus resin from the Al Ghuls, and then realizes Damien. And it's that night that we find Damien standing in front of Alfred Pennyworth's grave. He kneels down. He says that he was the first person to treat him with kindness. The first person who treated him with respect. The first one who had faith in him. He failed to protect him, but I can fix it. He takes out the vial of Lazarus resin and he contemplates using it. And a voice tells him, go on, do it. Bring the old man back from the dead. Damien looks over to see another him. He would assume it's a clone since that seems to be rather common with Damien, but no, it's pouring rain and this other version isn't wet. He's the lingering side effect of Mother Soul's magic, some kind of hallucination. The shadow pulls back, swinging. I am you! Everything everyone says about you! A risk, a killer, a monster, a sniveling brat, a mistake, a burden on your family, on your father, on this world. Everyone who looks at you knows about you, even Alfred. So go ahead and bring him back. Show Alfred what we really are. Damien looks at the vial of Lazarus resin and then looks at his shadow, smashing it against the grave. The shadow tackles him into a nearby hole. You fool! But after a few moments of nothingness, Damien pulls himself out, gripping the wet dirt. A hand reaches down to help him, and as Damien takes it, Talia helps him up, telling him that she's sorry. She was worried that Mother Soul magic had not fully run its course. She then looks over at the grave, asking, why didn't you resurrect him? Because I know the effects the Lazarus Pit can have on someone. It puts something dark inside of you and I wouldn't curse Alfred with that. It wouldn't really be him. Talia reaches out telling him that he left before they could speak. And Damien smacks her hand away. What are we gonna talk about? What could you even say? Before the tournament, you told me that I was there because I was a weapon. What's changed? She begins to state that she wanted to rebuild their empire that she has made mistakes in the past, that she wants to, but Damien cuts her off. Let's just cut to the chase. The two of us, a fight to the death. That's what you really want to see, right? To make sure your weapon is ready for whatever war is coming? Go on, raise your sword, mother. This is the cycle of our lives. Roz hates his mother, 
and she hates Roz. Because of you and Batman, I know that I will never have children because I would never subject them to the life that we live. Now come on and fight me. Damien lunges forward swinging, but Talia dodges his attack, telling him that they can break the cycle. You're right about everything. Our family has been broken for centuries. We can break this cycle together. I would like it if you stayed with me, not as a weapon, but as my son. Damien is stunned, pauses for a moment as he lets his body relax. I, I would be open to that. As the two leave, Talia says that they need to talk about his new friend, this flatline. She doesn't like her. And Damien tells her, I don't care, because I do. Meanwhile, over in Tokyo, Flatline sits on a throne of bones, reading the same manga that Damien was reading when a voice asks if she kept it. She jumps up, reaching for her bag, stating that she barely got off the island with it. His grew back, so no one noticed. She hands over the object, and a voice says, Goody, goody. The Lazarus resin is strong, but not as strong as the blood of the demon. And as Lord Deathman holds up the heart that Flatline ripped out of Damien, he begins to laugh as his plan is beginning to come to fruition. And there you have it, the full story of Robin, issues 1 through 12, right here at Comic Storian. We put out a full story every Monday, so make sure you check back because YouTube's notifications are kind of failing right now. But you can increase the rate that you're going to see them by simply clicking on that bell down below and pressing subscribe. Turn on your notifications and you'll catch all the long form videos that we make right here. Also, if you really like these videos and want them earlier, check us out over at Patreon where you can get early access to them. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.